What's up everyone, welcome to the video. If you're new here, go down below and subscribe to the channel. Today we're talking about VHS cameras and are they a good addition to your toolkit for making video? Obviously a lot of transitions, a lot of effects, a lot of glitches comes from this amazing VHS system. So VHS cameras were kind of a consumer camera that allowed people such as moms and dads to really get into recording their children, recording their families, recording their trips. These are the VHS-C tapes. This is what is used to record on these devices and they can typically hold between 30 and 90 minutes of record time. So most of these VHS cameras have the same exact functions. You have a flip out small color screen that you can use to record your video and monitor the video or if you put the screen inside the camera, you can actually use this flip up eyepiece that's usually in black and white, which is kind of weird to shoot. And I don't know how many people actually use this. Around the camera, you have all the functionality that you need for this to be an all-in-one device. It can play the tapes directly from the camcorder, which means once you record to this tape, you don't have to do anything with it except plug this into your TV with a cord, and then you're good to watch these tapes. These are consumer grade cameras and it definitely shows. They're made out of cheap plastic. The batteries don't hold up as well at all. Once I used this camera twice, the battery was shot and I couldn't record any more footage. When you are using it as a VHS system, you are able to directly plug a power cord into the camera to watch it, to play it back. But the battery life on these is just too inconsistent to recommend for me. The audio of these cameras are pretty good. I was impressed with it, especially not having an external mic but it's nothing to brag home about. It definitely picks up a lot of noise and has that old vintage effect. It shoots in a four x three format, which is pretty unique. It definitely doesn't look like the 16 by nine aspect ratio, but the low light performance of the VHS camera actually did very well. I was able to shoot this in my bedroom in almost pitch blackness and still get a photo. The footage from this video is super grainy and it doesn't have any dynamic range. I did say that it performs well in low light and it also performs well in light that is completely balanced. But once you enter in a dynamic situation that has a lot of contrast, this camera just doesn't do well at all. The footage that I got from a VHS-C camera, I was definitely way more impressed with than I thought I would be. But in all honesty, I was still a little underwhelmed by the quality once I put it on my machine. Since the VHS-C camera acts as an all-in-one VHS machine, I was able to record the tape from off of this device onto my computer. Now, that doesn't come free of charge. You actually need this Elgato video cable to do it, and this costs from anywhere from $60 to $100, depending on if you get it used, new, and who you're getting it from. And I have to say that the experience of using this cable right here was absolutely terrible. And it's nothing to do with the cable. It's more so to do with the software that comes with the cable. The Elgato video capture is just terrible and I had a lot of issues with it. A few times that I recorded, I just did not get a video saved. It didn't save the video correctly or didn't start recording the video at all, even though it had a timer and a blinker going saying that it was recording. And I even had it save in a, in a format called MPEG-4, which I was unaware of until this video, and I was unable to convert that video at all, so I just scrapped that whole thing in general. When I was able to get the Elgato video cable to work, it was a pretty smooth process and it did export the videos in MP4, which was usable in Final Cut, QuickTime, and other video playbacks. But to me, it just really wasn't worth the hassle. The other option is that you go to a lab that specializes in VHS tapes and they'll record it and they'll just digitalize that footage for you and send it to you. But still, that just costs money. That doesn't make sense when this was meant to be a device that was supposed to capture stuff and not need any processing. Now, if you're not gonna digitalize the video, then you're probably just gonna buy a lot of VHS-C tapes, which I don't see as an issue, except for the fact that apparently after 20 plus years, the quality of the tape can degrade and you can lose your memories. So that's why it's strongly encouraged to digitalize them as fast as you can because then you get all of those memories right there and then. When you're walking around with one of these cameras, people definitely can tell that it is a VHS camcorder. There are camcorders that do look like this still nowadays, but a lot of people will be able to tell like, oh, that is a VHS camera. And that is a cool feeling, except 
it's not something that I love shooting with. It definitely is clunky. The buttons are all plastic and it's not the most fun shooting experience. And this is something that I could say you can beat up, but if you do, it might not work and you'll have to buy another cheap one. But it's just annoying to keep getting VHS-C cameras that are just cheap and plastically made. So at the end of the day, I do not recommend the VHS-C camera. I think it's really fun and quirky to shoot with and you can definitely get some cool videos with it. But the process of taking the tape and then recording it and then having a lot of issues with the camera's battery life and other issues with the buttons not working, I don't think it's worth the hassle and I don't think you get the greatest footage from it either. I'd honestly recommend just sticking with the trendy glitch effects and stuff because the only reason you'd use VHS in your videos nowadays would just to be to get those cool effects. But you might as well just record high quality footage and then be able to degrade the footage yourself and be able to put those effects on when you need them and not rely on the camera to give you those effects and then give you that bad quality. So that's it for this video. If you enjoyed checking out the VHS cameras, subscribe down below. I'll have more videos for you guys talking about other cameras to try and shoot. So have a good one guys. Check out these videos up here. Peace.